President Bola Ahmed Tinobo has ordered civil servants who relocated abroad to refund the salaries they have they are collecting. Anyways, the, do, the, the, gov, the president, I beg your pardon, has directed that all Nigerian civil servants who have relocated abroad but are still drawing salaries from the federal government without formally resigning to refund the money they are fraudulently collected. The president also directed that the supervisors and the department heads of the corporates must also be punished for aiding and abetting the fraud on their, their watch. The president further said that those who say that a nation is as good as its civil service are close to the truth, that they are the actual establishment that remains to pilot government affairs as politicians come and go. All right, gentlemen, so let's wait into this. Well, what the president said is still uh, is obvious. Any civil servant can jack her. But there is a civil service rule. If you want to leave job, resign and leave. Write a resignation letter. It doesn't take you. And if your visa of a country you want to jack her to come unexpectedly, forfeit the month's salary and go now. But the situation in which you are jack her in one country, you are still collecting the salary that will for another person. No, that one is pure criminal, you are a thief. No, it's, there is nothing to even that you are a thief. So one thing there is that because when you want to get the uh, job, you wrote letter and they give you the letter of engagement. And they gave you the service, civil service rule. So when you are going, but another thing again is that it's an indictment. Thank God that the president also indicted the heads. The heads. So if somebody at Jaffa, they are menu. By the time they do uh, high to high screening, eight counts, a lot of people that are Jaffa, they are still collecting salary. In fact, I know some. And I say it is criminal. I start to be corrected. Purely is criminal. You are denying, you say Nigeria is not good. We all agree. We can see it. And you left for greener pastor who hold that greener pastor, leave this space. For another person, and I want the president to go beyond that. Our civil service needs to be reformed. A situation in is some, is somebody that you can see physically like this, he said he's not up to assist you. Somebody that is even first born is celebrating 55. It's every year they will be changing their file, they will be changing whether they want to change. I think it is better. A situation in which you can go when you are good, let other people call me. But a situation in which you are collecting salary. In fact, some people, they move from public to private. And they are still collecting money from public. And they are still collecting the one for private. And they are collecting. And two times now, we say politicians are not good. The one that you are even doing is even more than the politicians. So what is important is that presidents should not say it by mouth. They should follow it. All those people, thank God that they didn't ask them they want to jail them or they want to prosecute them. They should pay all the money they collected to Nigerian cover. It is a purely criminal case and they should be handled as a criminal. Thank you, Mr. Dekwenro. Like um, Mr. Dekwenro said, it's an indictment on, you know, the head of departments, you know, at this um, uh, this uh, civil service uh, offices and all of that. I will say that. All of this is coming because the head of service of federation, Yemi Eson, you know, came out, you know, and talked about this. But we know this has been going on for the longest of time. Don't we have records? How can you be working under somebody and the person doesn't know you've been gone for one, two, three, three months, going into years? How is that possible? Um, it's um, um, voluntary. It, it's voluntary pollution. <laughs> There's anything like that. I mean, look, we, we said we all know these things now. This, these things are not new. Um, the ghost, this is a ghost worker problem. Yes. It's just not that category of ghost worker, you know. Um, and uh, this ghost worker thing has been with us for as long as I can remember. Ngozi Okonjo, where I was uh, repeated, have said, uh, I can't remember the number, some thousands of people that she discovered were ghost workers when she did, when she ran that audit sometime in 2011 or 2012 or thereabouts. Um, I've been a part of a team that to set up um, a staff audit for a state government and I know okay. the horrors that we went through. You mm -hmm. know. So it's basically including threat to life. Mm -hmm. you know, 
So, so it, it's a case of um, the civil servants themselves all being in league. It's a racket. Mm -hmm. From the top, trust me, there is none of them that can be exonerated from, from this thing. Um, so people leave um, the country uh, for months. They're still drawing on salaries. How is that possible? Don't they sign attendance register? You know? So, so clearly, some people are benefiting from this. That money, they'll probably share out of it with someone. Thank you know, you. and all of that. Yeah, so it, it, it's just a racket. And um, I've always said uh, to the larger issue surrounding this, this issue of civil service reforms and productivity, you know, <clears throat> I've always said that any president that will succeed, that really, really wants to succeed in this country, the, one of the first reforms that he must embark on the civil service, and they always run away from it because it's very tough. Yes. It's difficult. They will, they will face a battle. You know, that, it's an entrenched mm. um, uh, court this whole civil service thing. So, um, President Inubu is good, he's highlighted it, but if he really, really wants to do well as a president, he has to tackle, he has to face them headlong. So he has brought it out. Let him act. He is the president, mm. right? He's not, he's not a preacher, he's not a motivational speaker. Mm. <laughs> so he can meet out, not just consequences, meet out consequences on the people that um, have been fingered in this particular one. Mm -hmm. But more critically, set about reforming the civil service fundamentally so that the civil service can drive productivity and development of country. If he doesn't do that, you know, we're just going to be talking. It, it, it just won't, won't quite work. The courage and the energy, I will always drag our Mr. President on this matter. The courage and the energy with which he said subsidy was gone, that he was willing to tackle this subsidy problem and face the Nigerian people and tell them that this thing must happen. You have to take this pill. He needs to deploy that same courage <coughs> to these more fundamental issues. If he fixes the civil service, subsidy will not be a problem. Do you know the amount of productivity we're losing and that is resulting in revenue leakages and revenue losses, you know, and all of that? So it's a good thing he has brought it up, but uh, he has to do more than talk and do more than preach and do more than commend, you know, the heads of service and all of that that brought it up. He needs to act and tackle the problem of the civil service head on. All right, so you talked about reforming the civil service. Where do we begin, you know, from? Let's not forget, on Monday on this show, um, we discussed uh, the head of service here, yes, on saying Nigeria civil service is the best in the whole world. All right, so if from the perspective of the government, they are seeing the civil service as perhaps, you know, very good, as good as being the best in the world. Then why are we talking about reforms? No, the, in fact, the interview that you mentioned it, I know with the <laughs> mind of that service, uh, it, just, it just means sarcastic. Look, all of us, we know, is it talking about civil servants in U.S. that won't conduct the election? No, is he talking about that one? That one because the civil are in US, they are the one conducting the election. No? The council workers are the one conducting the election. No? Look, you know, in Nigeria, we always run for our problem. Something that is obvious. If you tell some people now that price of Gary is high, they will be posting that in their own area, mm. basin of Gary is 200 naira. You will not ask them, send me your account, let me send it to you, bring it to me. We all know that our civil service, it is not now, from the time in memoria, we have problem. How to solve the problem? We must first of all know that we have problem. Are you talking about this particular civil servant from local government, state government, and federal government? The one that a governor will proclaim that, okay, oh, you, oh, uh, because of the uh, answer that that one wants to give you, is 35,000 naira. And one local government chairman will be giving, or all the local government will be giving to a naira. And one has said 35,000, and you go behind and go and be giving. Are you talking about the one that you have two people? They got job at the same time. They were employed at the same time. This 10 years knows the line. One is a uh, inspector, and one is SP. And it's not that that one uh, is in SP. Got special award though. It's normal promotion, but that one was not promoted for six years. Because? Because of nothing. <laughs> if you don't 
know of them, they did not, they did not have any query, they did not have anything. No. Are you telling me that the simple side that he's talking about, that before a fight will move from one place to another, it will take months that you must pay? I want to challenge anybody in Nigeria. If you buy land and you want to process your document for land and you will not give any civil servant money, I want to see the person. Not even touch, not even mocks. That you must pay. Do you know what they call PR? It is not public relations, no. It's purely a good day. They call it. But we know the meaning of public relations. But their own is a good day. Then another thing again is that who are those people in civil service? Are they the ones that want to be in civil service? Or the one that they are father, mother, uncle, or politicians that can not them there? But then why do Nigerians have this lackadaisical attitude to things that have got to do with government? Do you get what I mean? Yeah. If it's a government property, then we... No repercussion. No punishment. All right. Look, let me tell you. I told somebody, it is the high time. Maybe in Nigeria we should change our dimension. Let us run in Nigeria as a private organization. If there is a if there is a ladder for productivity, the only problem is just that who is going to rate that productivity? Is it the one that the private sector that will be brought by the politicians? If not because of that, your boy used to say, Oh, I should go there. In fact, Bible said it that any 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 soul that does not work, the does they have to eat, could only stated it that when you don't eat from your sweat. You are eating hell fire. You will see people that okay. Let me give a very this one is a very good example though. I have somebody. He's working, and that person is doing full time. In his master's program, he's doing full time, and he goes to class Monday to Friday. Well, he's, uh, in the class, and he's in the civil service. <laughs> Do you know that when he's done for promotion, I got promotion. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. He got his master's and carry on. But he has changed in Nigeria for two, three years and he runs that particular program. That is the kind of country we find us. And if we don't fix our civil service, all this one that we say politician, do you know the person that normally open channels on corruption of politicians? Is this people now, guy? This is where we see money. You want to make money. And politicians, you know their own. They are just like what Jesus said. They were born to steal, to loot. Yeah. And this one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dequenro. All right, I asked Mr. Dequenro uh, the question. I'll ask you the same question. Where do we begin this reform from? Uh, seeing that maybe even the government doesn't see there's such a huge problem, such as the one we're describing at the table. Uh, I mean, for the for the head of service who have gone ahead in an interview to say Nigeria's civil service is the best in the world, uh, it means that they think that we're good. So where do we even start this? reforms from. Thus, let me quickly uh, just say this, you know, um, this is not to put the government down, but to bring the issues to the fore. I do know that administration after administration after administration does do things to make it look like they're trying to rejig the civil service. I mean, uh, if you recall uh, correctly, during the time of Fashola, um, civil servants are going to work more punctually because uh, he'll come earlier than you and for you if you're late there are consequences so i know that there are things they do uh for instance a particular ministry i i i had an encounter with i won't name the ministry uh but then i wrote a petition and because they were trying to check mate the corruption in the system and all that you don't do your petition there anymore go do it bring it all right but I kid you not, if you go and bring your petition from outside, they have a way they will circumvent that. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand what I mean? So, at the end of the day, the people you are coming back to, they will still find a way to make you part with something for whatever you are brought to pass through. Also, when they are going to deliver to whatever, they come up with suggestions so that um, we have Korea so to make it fast, fast, you know, to you don't want it fast. It, do you understand? So all the things we are all Nigerians, we know how it goes. It all happens, but we do know there's government efforts trying to stop all these things. But that's just on the one side. But on the other side, my question again is where do we begin this reforms from? How? I mean, look, if the head of service has already given herself a pass mark and says that our civil service is the best in, in the world, world. Mm. 
Mm. I would really like to see what metrics she used to measure that. You know, because if you are, you know, you are basically saying your workforce is the best in the world. So you mm. must be, you must be alluding or inferring that they are the most productive. Because that's at the end of the day, that's what the workforce is really the most important measure of how good a workforce is, how productive they are. You know, how do they convert every naira that I spend into how many naira, you know, in return and all of that. Um, so if the his head of civil service is saying that they're the best in the world, then we're in trouble um, because everybody else knows that that's not true. Um, and before you can fix the problem, you have to admit, like he has said, that there is a problem. So if we are saying that we're best in the world, then, you know, that means there's no problem and there's nothing to fix. But since we know that it's not true, um, I think that what, what we need to do is to continue to speak to the issue, to continue to bring it to the fore of the national conversation, um, to continue to make the politicians uncomfortable with this. And unfortunately, because they live in their own bubble, in their own cocoon, um, no matter how much talk you talk, <laughs> they, they, they basically just go, ahead, go about their business as, as usual. Mm. I, I think one of the problems is that the people that we have in the positions of power that can actually do something about this are core career politicians mm -hmm. who have been in the system. I don't think there's anybody right now in, in any of the major uh, political offices in Nigeria that has not been in politics for at least 20 years. They have worked with civil servants, mm -hmm. they have been ministers, they have been legislators, they have been governors, you know, and all that, and they're used to this system. So they will not see the problem. They can't see it. It just mm -hmm. simply doesn't exist to them. So for us as people, we that we know that this thing is a problem, I think we just need to simply wake up. We have to wake up as a people and understand that um, if we don't talk about these things and make an issue out of them, nothing will. Look, I have been saying this thing, you know, it's not a curse, I'm not a doomsday prophet or anything. Nigeria, come back to Nigeria in 20 years' time. 20 years from today. This is 2024. 2044. God keep us. All of us that were watching this, even if you are 70, you can still be alive in 20 years' time. We will still have 5,000 megawatts of power. Mm. Please, mark my word. I'm not a doomsday prophet. We will still have 5,000 megawatts of power. Our roads will still be bad. The hospitals will still be dead centers. Why? Nigerians don't talk. We don't get agitated. We don't get outraged. We don't get angry. In fact, we do exactly the opposite. We fight amongst ourselves and provide explanations and justifications for the nonsense that politicians do to us. So, look, how can you fix the civil service if we don't make an issue out of it? We need to make an issue out of it. And let, for example, when Mrs. Sesson, yeah, Mrs. Yes. said that thing, she should have been dragged thoroughly, even if it's on social media. Let her trend for one week so that her children will know that she said one nonsense somewhere, you know, and all of that. But, but nothing happened. Nothing happened, you know. So, until we, so I'm saying that answer to your question, where does it start from? We have to start from us yeah. because the politicians they don't care, mm -hmm. they don't send donor. So it has to be we people that will say there is a problem here, we demand that okay. you fix it. All right, then in addition, quickly, sir, the reason if you look at their ineffectiveness, it's not affecting and it's affecting us exactly. A nurse that is not going to work for my child, your child to be treated. What will happen to that child? A police officer that is also a public servant that wants to do his job or her job, he troubled on me, but he will not do that one to the politician. A doctor that's supposed to do his or her job, that also do it, is rubbing up on me. A civil servant that's supposed to put my file from point A to point B, that waiting for me to give him or her money. And first to do that, it's going to affect me. It can affect them because they know how to modify all those people because they have money to give. And they know by that this thing is done. And that is the reason. So if we don't talk, and that's why you see some certain people, do you know that I went to a particular school that is owned by a local government? And I discovered that, that those children in that school, they are up to 80. I counted them. They have only four teachers. Out of that four teachers, two are cleaners. And by 9.15, only one teacher is in that school. No other teachers. And I called the head of the 
education in that local government. This is what happened. I took the picture. I took the video. He was not begging me. I said, you are begging me because of the future of these children or you are begging me that you not expose it. And you call the local government to come and explain. They are all running for you. They are all running for you. Nobody wants to talk. And some people put their children in the care of one teacher, 80 students. Who is it affecting? You, are you going to find someone lose children in that school? Are you going to see commissioner children in that school? You can only see the children of the poor. So if you don't talk, if you don't talk, it's going to rub it on on us. Well said, Mr. Digbeiro. Well, thank you so much, sir. All right. Uh, also, in the president's statement, he said, I "Quote: The civil service is the bedrock, the engine, the lo locomotive of government, which is necessary." for the government to deliver public goods to citizens. As politicians, we are no more than drivers of the lo locomotives you provide. Therefore, we are steadfast in our commitment to cultivating, empowering, and professionalizing our human capital within the service. It is imperative to foster a culture of excellence and instill confidence among our civil servants. All right, we hope that our civil servants will begin hmm, hope We'll begin to do, 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 do good by the Nigerian people.